Good morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I'll know that you're watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, go ahead and type a number one in the comments so we will know that you are watching. And as you all are coming in, type in the comments, God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. Good morning, Victoria. Say, I am so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Amen. Come on in this morning. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Don't forget to share the broadcast. Go ahead and type in hashtag shared after you've shared. Good morning. Let's see. Good morning. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As y'all come in, type, there's none like you. Nobody. Good morning. Come on in this morning. There's no like you. Good morning. Great morning, everyone. Come on in and type in the comments. God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. Great morning, everyone. Go ahead, share the broadcast. Type in hashtag share. It's not. Say nobody like you. None like you. Amen. There we go. No. There's none like you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Or afternoon or evening, whenever you're catching the replay. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to see you all. Make sure you grab your Bibles, grab your water, grab your journals. Um, if you are tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We are currently reading again through the One Year Bible, and the publisher is Tyndale. Um, you do not have to have a One Year Bible, but it is helpful to have a One Year Bible, so I encourage you to get a One Year Bible. Um, you can find these on Amazon or your local bookstore. If you have trouble finding it, message me, and I'll send you the direct link um, for the one year Bibles. Um, the reason why I love this one year right Bible reading plan is because every morning we will read a portion of the Old Testament, New Testament, a small portion of Psalms, a small portion of Proverbs, and it's just amazing. And I feel like we never get bored reading through the Bible um, in this way. And I do like to say uh, we are not in bondage to the Bible reading plan. So if you're just finding us here today, or finding this replay, this replay video today, you can jump right in. Um, you do not have to get caught up, just jump right in. And y'all type this in the comments. If you get behind, right, 
just jump right in where we are. If you're far behind, do not try to catch up. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with typing in at least one thing in the comments that you're thankful for in today. If you not, have not anointed your hands yet, make sure that you do that. Um, and go ahead and type in the comments, my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed, oily, anointed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus' name. How do I know? Because this Bible, right? Y'all type in the comments. The Bible tells me so. Amen. So it's been an interesting uh, start of the new year. We are on day 12. Um, so far this year, you know, quite a few things happened. Um, even with yesterday, I was just sitting and had to take some time and pull back and sit and grab my word, uh, grab my journal and sit and renew my mind because I was just so frustrated yesterday. Um, yesterday morning, um, I ended my bathroom, ended up flooding my basement. I'm like, grab your bathing suits, everybody. We have a swimming pool in the basement. So I had to deal, we were dealing with that yesterday, trying to figure out what happened with the pipe in the bathroom. And I, I remember sitting for a moment, well, happy new year, <laughs> right? So I'm telling the kids, it's like, happy, well, happy new year. Uh, there's nothing happy about this new year and we have to be careful right about the words that come out of our mouths We have to be very careful. There's a lot That's happy about this new year, but in that moment, you know, sometimes we have to catch ourselves in the moment, right? And so on top of that with Zariah getting sick first and then me feeling sick I was just like what is happening here? So I was a little frustrated and that is where you know the word comes in us renewing our mind I'm like, okay, what's the lie here? Now what's the truth right in those moments? We have to identify the lie instead of speaking those lies out of our mouths There's nothing good about this new year Right? Our words have power and our words obey what we say, right? They create and shape and form our world. So it's so important for us to be careful about our words. Um, so I just kind of had to pull back yesterday and take some time to do that, right? And that's just kind of what happens in a moment and it happens to all of us. And so I was just like, okay, today is going to be a better day, right? Today is going to be a better day hoping that there's not too much water damage. We can get all of the water up and just all of that stuff. So why did I share that? I share that to hopefully encourage someone, at least one person in this video. You may feel like, oh, today is the 12th day of the new year and all hell has been breaking loose. There's nothing great so far about this new year. Y'all type in the comments right now. This is a great year, right? It's a great day to be alive. It's a lot to be thankful for and everything always works out for me, right? Everything always works out for me. Everything always works out for me. And I know that I'm not the only one that was feeling how I felt yesterday. You may feel like, you know, it's uh, yesterday, you may have been saying it's day 11 and I haven't done one thing that I said that I was going to do today. Today is a great day to begin, right? Today is a great day to begin. Nothing is going the way that I thought that it was going to go. Everything always works out for me, right? Everything always works out for me. And so I woke up today feeling a whole lot better. Was very frustrated yesterday, very frustrated. Um, very frustrated <laughs> and I know I'm not the only one that feels this way so um, I kind of like to share little things you know just so people know um, because a lot of times you know we spend time scrolling on social media you know looking at people's lives and end up being discouraged feeling like you're the only one going through things everyone's life looks so perfect and that's not true Right, and so y'all type in in the comments, everything always works out for me. Everything always works out for me. Everything always works out for me. All right, um, that's how you've been feeling like, yeah, 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 see, and that's why I shared that. I knew I wasn't the only one feeling the way that I feel, but in this moment, you have to watch your words, right? You have to watch your words because I know Miles looked at me like, excuse me, I was like, whoa, the, the, and I'm yelling, I'm running around the house, the house is flooding. The 
and I'm like, Happy New Year. Literally went to every single person. Well, the house is flooding. Happy New Year. You know, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the attitude that we're going to have today. That's just not what we're going to do today. So just kind of wanted to share that. It happens to all of us. And I know that I felt that way because so many other things had already happened. Um, so that's when you have to check yourself, right? Stop yourself in that moment. Um, and just that great moment, great time to practice emotional intelligence, right? We will not let our, our emotions master us, right? Um, and so that's just kind of what my day was yesterday. Just wanted to share that. Um, just in case anyone else was feeling how I felt yesterday. Uh, today is a new day, right? It's a great day to be alive. There's always something to be grateful for and what we focus on we magnify. So I got up, cleaned up as much as I could, you know, we cleaned up and I'm just going to move on. But I just wanted to kind of share that. I didn't plan on sharing it, but somehow it just came out. Maybe the Lord wanted me to share that. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and um, begin to thank the Lord and dive into the one year Bible. All right, that's right. Everything always works out for me. Everything. I'm not even worried. I'm not worried. So Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are God and you are good in every way there is to be good. And we just want to say thank you for today. We thank you. For, that's right. Everything always works out for me. We thank you so much for allowing us to see another day. We thank you, Father, for protecting us through the night for things that we have no idea you protected us from. We thank you for life. Even if you never do another thing for us, we say thank you. Y'all type in the comments, God, I thank you for everything. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for family. We thank you, Father, that everything works out for us. You said all things work together for our good and we just say thank you father we love you we thank you for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship and to worship and to spend time in your word we say thank you amen i just woke up grateful on today you know because it could you know there are worse things happening in the world right now all right so y'all type in thank you god for everything so i'm going to pull up the one year bible and we are going to jump right in we're going to jump in so I know there are still some things we have to take care of today but all is well right because everything always works out for me so I am not worried I'm not worried all right let's see make sure I didn't miss any questions all right so you all were just commenting with us all right perfect good morning Nicole so good to see you good morning Vanessa good morning to all of you Today is day 12. Y'all type the number 12 in the comments. Day 12. If someone can type in today's reading plan. I know Peggy usually posted. I didn't see it to pin it. January 12th. Our reading in if the, the Old volume Testament is okay, let me know comes from the, the book of two. Genesis chapter 26 verse 17. We'll go through chapter 27, verse 46. We'll see that faith cannot Thank you grow so much for sharing. Trials. And this chapter records several trials that Isaac endured and shows how he responded to them. We'll read about escape. Abraham, Isaac Thank started you, for Peggy. Egypt, but God stopped him at the border and reassured him. Isaac was blessed because of Abraham. We must never forget our debt to spiritual leaders and relatives who have gone before us. Mm -hmm. We'll read about deception. While in enemy territory, Isaac resorted to the family lie that twice got Abraham into trouble. It's sad when the new generation imitates the sins of the old generation. God blessed Isaac in a material way, but we do wonder what his spiritual life was like. Did his neighbors trust him after hearing about his lie? We'll read about surrender. Water is a very precious commodity in desert country, and possessing a well is almost the same as having a deed to the land. Instead of defending what his men had done, Isaac moved to new locations. We'll read about confrontation. In contrast to his father Abraham, who dared to Turn declare it up. war, Isaac was a quiet, meditative man who tried to avoid trouble. He boldly faced his neighbors with their bad conduct, and he won. 
Okay. In Genesis chapter 27, we'll read about a wrong decision. Sorry, making all kind of noise. It was only a matter of time before the divided home would start to self-destruct. And it all began with Isaac. He knew that God had chosen Jacob, the younger son, to receive the blessing. But he announced he would give it to Esau. It seems that Isaac was more interested in his physical appetite than in spiritual things. He was not the spiritual person he once had been. We'll read about a wrong solution. Rebecca knew what God's promise was to Jacob. And she should have let God work it out in his own way. Faith is living without scheming. And who can hinder the Lord from accomplishing his purposes? Instead, she made her son a liar and deceived her husband. If Isaac had trusted the Lord instead of his physical senses, he would not have been fooled. And then we'll Is read the about a wrong good? attitude. Esau had made it clear years before that he was simply not interested in spiritual things. And certainly he knew God's word about the blessing. He wept and begged for a blessing. And then he plotted to kill his brother. His heart was not right with God or man. Rebecca's few days became over 20 years. Despite all her scheming, she never saw her son on earth again. Well, let's delve into this as we begin our reading today here in the Old Testament. January 12th, Genesis 26, verse 17, through chapter 27, verse 46. So Isaac moved to the Gerar Valley and lived there instead. He reopened the wells his father had dug which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac renamed them, using the names Abraham had given them. His shepherds also dug in the Gerar Valley and found a gushing spring. But then the local shepherds came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said. And they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Argument, because they had argued about it with him. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again there was a fight over it. So Isaac named it Opposition. Abandoning that one, he dug another well, and the local people finally left him alone. So Isaac called it Room Enough, for he said, At last the Lord has made room for us, and we will be able to thrive. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will give you many descendants, and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshipped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place, and his servants dug a well. One day Isaac had visitors from Gerar. King Abimelech arrived with his advisor, Ahuzah, and also Philcol, his army commander. Why have you come? Isaac asked them. Good morning. This is obviously no friendly visit, since you sent me from your land in a most unfriendly way. They replied, We can plainly see that the Lord is with you. No so the Lord we decided is with we me. should have a treaty, a covenant between us. Swear that you will not harm us just as we did not harm you. We have always treated you well, and we sent you away from us in peace. And now look how the Lord has blessed you. So Isaac prepared a great feast for them, and they ate and drank in preparation for the treaty ceremony. Early the next morning, they each took a solemn oath of non-aggression. Then Isaac sent them home again in peace. That very day, Isaac's servants came and told him about a well they had dug. We found water, they said. So Isaac named the well Oath. And from that time to this, the town that grew up there has been called Beersheba, Well of the Oath. At the age of 40, Esau married a young woman named Judah, the daughter of Beeri the Hittite. He also married Bazamam, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. But Esau's wives made life miserable for Isaac and Rebekah. 
When Isaac was old and almost blind, he called for Esau, his older son, and said, My son? Yes, father, Esau replied. I'm an old man now, Isaac said, and I expect every day to be my last. Take your bow and a quiver full of arrows out into the open country and hunt some wild game for me. Prepare it just the way I like it, so it's savory and good, and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. But Rebecca overheard the conversation. So when Esau left to hunt for the wild game, she said to her son Jacob, I overheard your father asking Esau to prepare him a delicious meal of wild game. He wants to bless Esau in the Lord's presence before he dies. Now, my son, do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll prepare your father's favorite dish from them. Take the food to your father. Then he can eat it and bless you instead of Esau before he dies. But mother, Jacob replied, he won't be fooled that easily. Think how hairy Esau is and how smooth my skin is. What if my father touches me? He'll see that I'm trying to trick him, and then he'll curse me instead of blessing me. Let the curse fall on me, dear son, said Rebecca. Just do what I tell you. Go out and get the goats. So Jacob followed his mother's instructions, bringing her the two goats. She took them and cooked a delicious meat dish, just the way Isaac liked it. Then she took Esau's best clothes, which were there in the house, and dressed Jacob with them. She made him a pair of gloves from the hairy skin of the young goats, and she fastened a strip of the goat's skin around his neck. Then she gave him the meat dish, with its rich aroma and some freshly baked bread. Jacob carried the platter of food to his father and said, My father? Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Esau or Jacob? Jacob replied, It's Esau, your older son. I've done as you told me. Here's the wild game. Cook the way you like it. Sit up and eat it so you can give me your blessing. Isaac asked, How were you able to find it so quickly, my son? Because the Lord your God put it in my path, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come over here. I want to touch you to make sure you really are Esau. So Jacob went over to his father, and Isaac touched him. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's, Isaac said to himself. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac pronounced his blessing on Jacob. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. Yes, of course, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said, Now, my son, bring me the meat. I will eat it, and then I will give you my blessing. So Jacob took the food over to his father, and Isaac ate it. He also drank the wine that Jacob served him. Then Isaac said, Come here and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he was finally convinced, and he blessed his son. He said, the smell of my son is the good smell of the open fields that the Lord has blessed. May God always give you plenty of dew for healthy crops and good harvests of grain and wine. May many nations become your servants. May you be the master of your brothers. May all your mother's sons bow low before you. All who curse you are cursed, and all who bless you are blessed. As soon as Isaac had blessed Jacob, and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunting trip. Esau prepared his father's favorite meat dish and brought it to him. Then he said, I'm back, father, and I have the wild game. Sit up and eat it so you can give me your blessing. But Isaac asked him, Who are you? Why, it's me, of course, he replied. It's Esau, your older son. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who was it that just served me wild game? I have already eaten it, and I blessed him with an irrevocable blessing before you came. 
When Esau understood, he let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, Your brother was here, and he tricked me. He has carried away your blessing. Esau said bitterly, No wonder his name is Jacob, for he has deceived me twice, first taking my birthright, and now stealing my blessing. Oh, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master, and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is there left to give? Esau pleaded, Not one blessing left for me? Oh, my father, bless me too. Then Esau broke down and wept. His father Isaac said to him, You will live off the land and what it yields. And you will live by your sword. You will serve your brother for a time, but then you will shake loose from him and be free. Esau hated Jacob because he had stolen his blessing. Mm. And he said to himself, My father will soon be dead and gone. Then I will kill Jacob. But someone got wind of what Esau was planning and reported it to Rebekah. She sent for Jacob and told him, Esau is threatening to kill you. This is what you should do. Flee to your uncle Laban in Haran. Stay there with him until your brother's fury is spent. When he forgets what you have done, I will send for you. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebecca said to Isaac, I'm sick and tired of these local Hittite women. I'd rather die than see Jacob marry one of them. Heading into the New Testament. Now is a great 12. time to share if you haven't shared. And now as we turn our attention to the reading of the New Testament, our narrative today will come from the book of Matthew. In chapters 8 and 9 of the book of Matthew, we'll read about the fact that God can meet every need. Yes, Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for you God. Y'all type that in the comments. every care on him. That's what he wants you to do. You cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. And God responds to faith. The men who brought their friend exercised cooperative faith, while the sick woman had almost superstitious faith. Christ asks you and me the same question, the same question he asked the two blind men. Do you believe that I am able to do this? Do you believe? Well, let me ask you, what's your reply to that question from the Lord? What's your concern? Do you believe he's able to meet uh, your concern? God's greatest concern I is believe. the salvation of sinners. Healing of the sick is a great miracle, yes. And the raising of the dead, very impressive, even a greater miracle. But the salvation of the lost soul is the greatest miracle of all. And God calls us to help him reach the lost. But with that, let's begin reading today here in the New Testament. I'm typing, I believe. January 12th. I believe. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. Jesus climbed into a boat and went back across the lake to his own town. Some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. Blasphemy! This man talks like he is God, some of the teachers of religious law said among themselves. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why are you thinking such evil thoughts? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk? I will prove that I, the Son of Man, have the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, take your mat, and go on home, because you are healed. And the man jumped up and went home. Fear swept through the crowd as they saw this happen right before their eyes. They praised God for sending a man with such great authority. As Jesus was going down the road, he saw Matthew sitting at his tax collection booth. Come, be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. That night, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to be his dinner guests, along with his fellow tax collectors and many other notorious sinners. 
The Pharisees were indignant. Why does your teacher eat with such scum? They asked his disciples. When he heard this, Jesus replied, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to be merciful. I don't want your sacrifices. For I have come to call sinners, not those who think they are already good enough. Mm -hmm. One day, the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples don't fast? Jesus responded, Should the wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Someday he will be taken from them, and then they will fast. And who would patch an old garment with unshrunk cloth? For the patch shrinks and pulls away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger hole than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. The old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. I do. New wine must be stored in new wineskins. That way, both the wine and the wineskins are preserved. Thank you, Anna. Psalm chapter 10, verses 16 through 18. The Lord is king forever and ever. Let those who worship other gods be swept from the land. Lord, you know the hopes of the helpless. Surely you will listen to their cries and comfort them. You will bring justice to the orphans and the oppressed. So people can no longer terrify them. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything your land produces. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with the finest wine. See that? Promises are conditional, right? We must practice the principle to participate in the promise honor the lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce then right we always pay attention to what comes before that then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine so we have to be careful um when we're running around right like used to be like me quoting a word claiming the promises but did you do what the word said right but did you do what the word said um so father we thank you for the reading of your word we thank you for your word that leads us we thank you for your word that guides us and we thank you for your word that protects us in jesus name amen so y'all see i always lean in and pay attention not that all the words don't get my attention but that the words then like if i if you then i then he anyway that was just me talking to myself out loud all right so um you all can begin to share your takeaways in the comments lots of good little nuggets today um lots of good nuggets y'all type in the comments personal devotion personal devotion it is so important that we spend time in personal devotion, right? This is our corporate morning devotion. This is wonderful. Um, this is great accountability for us all. I love us coming together. Um, it's just something about us coming together, reading and listening together, but we always wanna make sure that we take the time and the excuse that I don't have time it's just an excuse and I'll say this again because I had to learn this for myself and whenever I find myself saying I don't have time and that's about anything you know we make time for the things that are important to us and if we can be honest with ourselves and really think about the time that we make to do the things that we want to do right it's not a time issue right and so we make the time for things and people that are important to us so if your time with God is important to you you'll make the time Listen, I, I know I used to struggle. I didn't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time, right? I just didn't have the time. And one day I realized that it wasn't a time issue. It was a heart issue, a matter of the heart. It's like if your time with God is important to you, Keisha, this was me talking to myself, you will spend time, think about all the things you make time for, right? And so I, I'll just kind of keep reminding us of that. Um, because sometimes we just need to be reminded. So first question for us today, um, the first question 
in Matthew 9, verse 4. Matthew 9, verse 4. Um, Matthew 9, verse 4. Let me find it. Hang on. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Jesus asked, why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? Why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? So the question for us is, does this question convict you? There was a time, and I'll be transparent, there was a time where, yes, that question would have convicted me. But now I feel like I can honestly say no. But if, if your answer is yes, it is okay. Because these are the things that you want to deal with. You know, this time of personal devotion, just you and God alone, you, God, your Bible, your pen, your journal, that's where true transformation happens, right? So does this question convict you? If so, what about? Again, the question, why do you have or why do you entertain such evil thoughts in your heart? Does this question convict me? If so, why? right? Talk to God about it. Talk about it. He knows anyway, right? He already knows what's in your heart. So that's question number one. Question number two, Isaac, um, well, not really a question. Well, a point in a question. In Genesis 26, Genesis 26, um, thir verses 32 and 33. Hang on, hang on. Let me find it. 32 and 33. Uh, do I want to start? Okay, yes. Verse 32. That very day, Isaac ser Isaac's servant came and told him about a new well they had dug. We found water, they've ex exclaimed, right? Such a God moment. So Isaac, verse 33. So Isaac named the well Sheba, which means oath. And to this day, the town that grew up there is called Beersheba, which means well of the oath, well of the oath. And so we see here, and there, there were time, many times where we've read throughout Genesis where they had those God moments, right? And they commemorated those God moments. So my question for us today is what God moments do you need to commemorate in your life? What God moments do you need to commemorate in your life? So just take some time and think about those God moments that you have experienced in your own life. And then uh, one other question that I wrote down. Um, are y'all writing these down? I didn't see them in the comments. Someone type them in the comments. You may be writing, literally writing them down. Um, another question I wrote down as um, from the narration, from the commentary. Am I... What did I write? Am I more focused on my physical appetite than my spiritual appetite? Am I more focused on my physical appetite than my spiritual appetite? So that's a great question for us all. Am I? And listen, we can be honest with God, right? Because he knows anyway. Um, am I more focused on my, thank you, uh, Tamika. Am I more focused on my spiritual appetite? my physical appetite than my spiritual appetite all right and so let me jump ahead what were some other things that i have wrote down um i'm gonna read genesis 27 really quick genesis 27 verses 8 and 10 genesis 27 verses 8 and 10 sometimes it's hard to quickly find a verse here in this uh, bible verses 8 through 10 now my son listen to me do exactly as i tell you go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats i'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish then take the food to your father so he can eat it and bless you before he dies and um that was verse that was chapter 26 Hold on, let me find the right verse. I'm sorry, this is the one year Bible and it's hard to, let me make sure I read the right one. Hold on, hold on, hold the line. What, that's not what I wanted to read. Was that chapter 26? Where does, chap, where does chapter 27 start here? <laughs> okay, chapter 27. Okay, yes, that's, that was what I wanted to read. 
Um, so chapter 27, sorry y'all. So that was chapter, um, ch chapter 27 verses 8 and 10 and through 10 and I really should have backed up. Um, so really start from verse 5. All right, start from verse 5. And this was really just um, when we were reading about Rebecca scheming and just getting ahead of God. So change that and start at verse 5. That's why it kind of threw me off. So start back up to verse 5 and read it all the way down to verse 10. All right. So Genesis 27 verses 5 through 10. And we were just kind of reading about Rebecca where she was scheming, trying to get ahead of God. And the declaration that I wrote is, I decree and declare, I will trust God to work out his plans in his way. I decree and declare that I will trust God to work out his plans in his way. How many times have we been like Rebecca and taking and, t and have taken matters into our own hands? And I feel like when we were reading and sitting and listening, I was kind of just shaking my head, <laughs> or at least I thought I was shaking my head. And so we do that. And so just take some time thinking about the times that you have gone or gotten ahead of God instead of patiently waiting on him and taking some time to repent for that. All right. And this is all during your times of um, personal devotion. So we're often like her taking matters into our own hands um, and we need to wait on God and his timing. Y'all type that in the comments. I will wait on God and his timing. And then yesterday, um, I backed up to yesterday in Genesis 25. Um, I'm going somewhere with this. I have something that I, I just share my takeaways. All right. And Genesis, I backed up to Genesis 25 yesterday, January the 11th, verses 22 through 26. Whereas today, you know, we saw that Rebecca was scheming and doing whatever she did, you know, to doing all that she did to get ahead of God. But yesterday in Genesis 25, 22 through 26, you know, he already told her. That Jacob would be a great leader like he already told her and yet and still she was impatient right and did not want to wait on God scheming manipulating and you know and how many times have we done that to get what we want when we want how we want it instead of waiting on God when he already told us what he was going to do right so y'all type in the comments I will wait on God so that was just one of the things um, that stood out to me so she chose deceit rather than patiently waiting on God. She chose deceit rather than trusting God. And if we can all be honest, right, we may not have gone, gone as far to the extreme as she did, but we have done the same thing before, right? And so what do we do in those moments? If you haven't already, take some time and repent for that. And then we're de declaring that we will wait on God and we will trust in God. So another question that I wrote down from this is, is there an area in your life where you need to trust God's leading? Is there an area in your life right now where you know that you need to trust God's leading? Is there an area in my life where I need to trust God's leading? Are y'all with me? Are y'all following me? <laughs> and, you know, just being reminded today, just reminding us all that God's leadership is perfect. Someone type that in the comments for me. God's leadership is perfect. God's leadership is perfect. We can always trust him to lead us perfectly, right? He is the best leader. God's leadership is perfect. And so we talk again, I'll say this again, we talk so much about trusting God, right? Because everything goes back to trusting God. Like, do you trust him? Who are you putting your trust in? What are you putting your trust in? Do you truly trust God? And the definition of like trust, right? And today we're talking about trusting in God is a belief in God's truth, his ability, and his strength. Do you believe in God's truth? Do you believe in God's ability? Do you believe in God's strength? And so y'all type in the comments, I believe God. Y'all just type that in, I believe God. I believe God. And so I just wrote down five quick bullet points, five ways that we can trust God, right, in our everyday lives. Five ways. There are more, but I'm just giving us five bullet points, right? Yes, his leadership is perfect. It truly is. It truly is. So five ways that we can trust God in our everyday lives. Number one, we can act, we actively cast our cares on him, right? He tells us in Psalm 55, 22, that we can cast our cares on him because he cares for us. So do we trust God enough to cast our cares on him? So we can make a decision today. I'm gonna cast all of these cares on God, right? Yesterday, the whole, well, see, I'm exaggerating. The whole house did not flood, 
but an, an area of my house did. And I was like, I'm going to cast this care on God because there is absolutely nothing that I can do about this right now. So uh, one way in our everyday lives that we can show that we trust God is to cast our cares on him, number one. Um, number two, to plug into his word every day, spending quality time with him. And that is what I have been showing up, encouraging all of us to do, right? And um, honestly, it really just takes 20 minutes for us to read the one year Bible reading. And I know the videos are usually an hour. So I will say this, if you do not have an hour, you know, the first 30 minutes, you know, usually we're wrapping up our one year Bible reading right around five o'clock, 5.05. Or even if you feel like, you know, you wanna read it on your own, just make sure you spend some time in a word every day. So number two, we plug into God's word every day, spend quality time with God, y'all type in the comments, personal devotion, right? This is why I'm always encouraging this. Number three, walk in obedience to him. If we, if we walk into obedience to him, us obeying his word shows that we trust him. We trust him enough to obey and do what he says to do, right? So again, five ways that we can trust God in our everyday lives, right? We, this is not complicated. We don't need to make this complicated. Number four, find security and confidence in him and him alone not in things not in people not in shopping not in eating not in all of these other things right that we find our security and confidence in we must find our security and confidence in god because that truly shows that we trust him right there was a time where i trusted more in food than anything well really it was spending right and when i could no longer do that because you all know the story, many of you do, then that was when I turned to food, right? Putting my trust in food. This food is gonna make me feel better, you know? Putting my security and confidence in things and people, everything but God, right? And that showed, and so I was saying with my mouth, I trust God, but my actions were showing otherwise. So this is a way that we can, you know, show that we trust God in our everyday lives is finding, um, putting our security and confidence in him and him alone. And distrust reveals an unbelieving heart, right? So it really all is a matter of the heart. And was I on number four? Was that, did I give you on number four? Did I skip ahead? Number five, waiting on the Lord, right? Just waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord and renewing our hope impatience causes us to run ahead of God and we saw that right we saw January 11th where God told uh, told Rebecca right that Jacob was going to be a great leader she was impatient chose scheming and deceit to make things happen her way and in, in her time right and impatient causes us to get ahead of God right and so is that all that I have and what is it? Is it Isaiah 40, 31? It's some, uh, I didn't write a scripture reference for that, but the verse is coming to my, my heart, but I did write down a heart that trusts God waits patiently. What's the verse that I will wait patiently on the Lord? There's quite a few of them. I'll, I'll, I'll pull up a few of them, but a heart, it all, it's all a matter of a heart, the heart, right? And a heart that trusts God waits patiently. Um, and so that's all that I have. So I should have uh, found some verses on waiting patiently on the Lord. But I'll leave that all for y'all to do. We, you can all Google that, right? Verses on waiting patiently on the Lord. I should have. Um, yep. I will pull up a few of those. Happy birthday. Um, who is it that said it was my birthday? Happy birthday, Jackie. Happy birthday to you. All right. So that's it. Um, that's all that I have today. And um, the more we know someone, right, the more that we know someone, the more that we trust them. We can't trust um, we don't trust those that we don't know. So the way that I have come to trust God, I feel like as much as I do was spending time with him um, and spending time in his word, really getting to know him. And the more that I spent time in his word and the more that I got to know him, the more I was able to trust him. So yes, um, that is my prayer for all of us, right? That we put our trust and hope and security and confidence in God. Um, and that he gives each and every one of us, yes, a, um, a patient heart, uh, you know, and a, a heart to just wait patiently on him. Um, and I can do that. Like yesterday, you know, for example, 
um, just with the things that were going on. I need to wrap this up in a minute just with the things that um, were going on in my house. I felt like I was kind of trying to, you know, just make things happen. And it's like, Keisha, wait, stop, slow down, right? God knew that this was going to happen. He knew that this was going to happen. Stop slow down. So I gave a few declarations, did I? Um, the first one was, um, I decree and declare I will trust God to work out his plans in his way. I decree and declare that I will trust God to work out his plans in his way. And then uh, we can do, I decree and declare that I will wait patiently on the Lord. I decree and declare that I will wait patiently on the Lord. All right. And then I declare that God's leadership is perfect in my life. I declare that God's leadership is perfect in my life. All right, and so that's it. I didn't write down the other two declarations, but, um, and uh, we can also do, I declare that I have a heart that waits patiently on the Lord, right? I declare that I, even if you don't right now, you can declare that I declare because there wasn't, I didn't always have a heart that waited patiently on the Lord. My heart doesn't always want to wait patiently on the Lord, right? But I declare I, that I have a heart that waits patiently on the Lord. All right, so that's it today. So I felt like that was a kind of a couple of different things, but hopefully you took something away from this. Um, and those are just five practical ways, right, for us to trust God in our lives and us to show God that we trust him in every, you know, in our everyday lives. So was this helpful? Was this helpful? Hopefully, this, I would pray it was helpful. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up. It's 521. Um, and we will be, for those of you in the wellness community, we will be walking um, at 530. So I will be ready and on time for that this morning. Um, was this helpful, y'all? Okay. All right, so... That's it. So even last night, I was like, I don't have time to sit and read and prepare for the morning. It's not a time issue. It's a heart issue. We make time for the things that are important to us, right? And I was just so, I told you I was so frustrated. And I'm like, I am not even going downstairs to my basement right now. Uh, they came out and got some of the water up. But I was just like, I'm not dealing with this right now. <laughs> I'm not dealing with this right now. <laughs> I told y'all I had my little attitude well happy new year <laughs> it is a happy new year it's a happy new year indeed <laughs> alright let me hop off of here I love you all so much have a wonderful day um, I did not do good with my water this morning um, this is nowhere near done so I need to finish my water this morning so have a wonderful day. I love you all, and I will see you all tomorrow. I pray that you are blessed. If you have not already, um, make sure that you share your takeaways in the comments. I want to make sure that we're all sharing our takeaways because we'll all glean from each other. And Alicia, I think I saw that you responded to my message. I'll um, respond after um, I finish walking and I sit down at my desk, okay? Um, and I saw a couple of other messages, too. I need to... I'll check your messages after I finish walking this morning. All right, have a wonderful day. Bye, y'all.